It has come a long way, and that's due in large part to better tools. Those tools, like forecast models, are constantly being worked on. They're routinely upgraded. Now, when it comes to hurricane season, forecasters at the National Hurricane Center, they're always looking at weather models and analyzing which ones are performing better, all to produce that most accurate forecast. Our very own Brian Norcross sat down with Dr. Michael Brennan, director of the National Hurricane Center, who offered a behind the scenes look at how artificial intelligence, what many of us say, AI, is already being, and how it's already being integrated into hurricane models. This is going to be a year where we start to really take in and evaluate some of the AI model guidance from various uh, producers, and we're going to pull that into our systems here and evaluate it, look at it in the context of the traditional modeling that we use to make our forecast, do some evaluations, and start to learn how we might be able to incorporate that into our forecast process. They're not going to be part of our official sort of consensus or blended models this year, but we may make some uh, additional ones on the side that we're going to test out and see how they do and perform. I think especially for track, there's a lot of promise on the AI side for some potential improvements in the near term. Um, intensity might take a little bit longer, but again, this is it's important for us to look at it ourselves, do our own evaluation and see how it fits in. Yeah, and just one more tool in the toolbox. So joining us now to talk more about this is Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross. Great to have you in studio, Brian. I mean, AI, it is everywhere. It, it's quite frankly hard to escape. So no surprise that the NHC is looking at it, but it's also nothing new to forecasters with the National Hurricane Center. They continue to experiment with AI models, as we heard. Not a thing of the future, but in fact, Brian, more a thing of the present. Yeah, this year is going to be the big year, though, because now we have access and regular access, uh, immediate access to many different uh, AI models. You have to think of them all as being in experimental mode. And I think it's important, actually, to, to uh, uh, distinguish between them what are, what are the, what's the difference between the AI models and the regular models. Well, the regular regular model actually tries to simulate the atmosphere, right? A bunch of mathematical equations, it, all these points in the atmosphere to simulate. The AI models don't do that. It's more pattern recognition oriented. We see in this pattern, it kind of, this is the kind of thing that happens in the future. It's, it's more than that, but that's the starting point in an AI model. So they actually operate quite differently. Let's look at those two areas, just to give you an idea of the models that we're going to look at here at Fox Weather. The two areas you were talking about in the Pacific, there's the 70 percent area. Here's the 80 percent area. The models in general have been showing two uh, low pressure systems developing as you were talking about. All right. So let's take a look at some of them here. Here's the GFS model. This is the one run by the uh, by NOAA and the National Weather Service. So this is the American GFS. And you see in this at this time, this is 3 a.m. on Monday Mountain Time. It's kind of focusing on the one closer to the Mexican coast, although there is a hint of some kind of development here. So it's showing a hint of these two separate systems, but it seems to want to develop the one closer to Mexico. Now, here's the European model. ECMWF stands for the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting, and they operate out of London. It's a consortium of a bunch of uh, governments get together and fund that, so it's more of a private kind of organization, publicly funded. Again, same time, all these are going to be the same time. It focuses on the one farther offshore, but it still talks about the, yes, there is some other possible development here closer to Mexico. All right, now a couple of AI models. This is the GraphCast. That's a Google uh, simulation, and it runs on the GFS. This particular one runs on the GFS, and notice it has a general area of low pressure, and you can kind of make out, look, a swirl there and a swirl over here. So it has two systems, but it does not have them very strong at 3 a.m. on Monday. Now, let's talk about the what's called the AIFS. You'll see this online. This is the European Center's uh, AI model. Again, it's related to Google research in the background, but it runs all on the work that the Euro European Center has done, and it has two, but it makes the stronger one here offshore. So you say, oh, what do you do with all that, those different kind of opinions? Well, we can put them all together, and here we've done this here at Fox Weather, and you see, they end up with this gobbledygook of lines, and when the systems are weak, we're very often going to see this. But when the systems get stronger, like this one offshore, the consensus is it's stronger. We look for consensus. And here's what we're going to, to say is probably that one offshore is going to, has a better chance of developing, but still there's a decent chance that both will develop when you look at it all kind of holistically. 
Now, how does this work with the, the regular models that we talk about? Well, I wanted to show you, by the way, if we look wider, look, we can kind of see that they all want to put low pressure here. We're going to keep a half an eye in the southern Gulf here, but really doesn't show anything organized at all on the Atlantic side. And look at the this slight differences up here in the north. So uh, in terms of these uh, dips in the jet stream coming through. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to add to our toolbox here, and we're going to look for how they all average together. Now, here's the typical spaghetti plots that we've seen for years and years. And notice what we do here at Fox Weather is we show the cone, and then we show the spaghetti plots and uh, to give us confidence that the cone is where the cone should be based on this uh, general averaging of the models. And then we always show the consensus because the consensus over time has been proven to be a better predictor of where a storm is going to go than any one model. People ask me all the time, what's the best model? I say the average, the consensus is. This year, the AI models are not going to be added to the consensus, but they will in the future. They'll do this in the, in the background and just see if it helps the consensus or not. Uh, they'll be evaluated separately this year. But uh, moving forward, I think that's what's going to happen based on what we uh, have seen so far, guys. That if this is just going to become another tool and it's going to be added into what we already have to make a better forecast. And from what I've seen, I think that is going to work. I mean, the future is bright with AI. And from what I've noticed, it doesn't take long for AI to catch yeah. on and to really improve the skill. And I wonder yeah. if that's going to happen in the same regard in, in the modeling world. Yeah. Because as you had mentioned, how regular models try to pick up and simulate the atmosphere, yeah. AI is trying to learn a patterns, and that's an, it's a unique approach. It's almost yeah. like looking at analogs, right? It's, it's yeah, and so the, <laughs> the thing is that because the AI models are so efficient, what you can do is you can run the AI model with exactly the same information, and yeah. then you can modify it a little bit and run it again, and you can really get a good distribution of possibilities because you don't have to use all this computer power. It takes a tremendous amount of computer power to do a little calculation. Imagine the computer's got a calculator out there going like this for every point in the atmosphere yeah. vertically and horizontally, right. right? It's working really hard for hours. This does it in a matter of minutes, and, and therefore we can get so many more runs, and we're, gonna, we're just going to learn much more about the variability in the atmosphere as we go forward. And this is the first year. This is a big difference this year in terms of what we have access to to show you and what the National Hurricane Center has to evaluate and what the scientific community uh, has to evaluate. Uh, it's all really beginning in 2025. Fascinating. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. Yeah. We're not in the we're not in, we're not in the present. We're in the future. We are in the yes. future. Oh, it it's is. going very fast, right. very fast. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brian, thanks for hanging out. It's such a fascinating discussion. I actually feel like I could talk about this a lot longer, but we appreciate you hanging we'll out have in the more studio. Convos. We will have a lot yeah. more convos. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Okay.